Hey guys, this is Awesome Loop here. And uh, today I'm gonna be giving you guys a short health update and uh, and um, be giving you guys a message too. So uh, health update, um, I'm now officially done my chemo and I'm done the radiation too. So uh, tomorrow, now I've got the uh, tacrolimus and the thymoglobulin, which is uh, just two things to prevent graft versus host disease. Uh, which is when the new bone marrow and and my body can kind of fight it sometimes. So it's to help prevent that. So uh, tomorrow I get the new bone marrow. So that'll be great. Um, so things are moving forward according to plan. Uh, so today I just want to say something to bring you guys into an awe of God. Okay. So a lot of you guys, if you're following my story, you know very well what I'm about to say, but I'm still going to say it. Um, so when I was first diagnosed with the cancer, my grandfather, shortly afterwards, was also diagnosed with cancer. And then he beat his while I was going through something called CMB. Uh, and then after he beat his, uh, I got back on the treatments to get this uh, bone marrow transplant here done and um, and it just it never ceases to amaze me how how God is just in control of every last detail of your life because what happened after that was um, I got hospitalized for jaundice the day after I was hospitalized I got news that my grandpa was terminally ill with cancer uh, he, he was expected to make it about a week. He lasted two cause he's a warrior. Um, but the jaundice that I got postponed my transplant, which doesn't happen. It, like, like that just doesn't happen. Right. So I got sent home just in time to be there to visit my grandpa twice before he passed away, uh, be there for the viewing. I couldn't be there for the funeral because there was too many people in, indoors. And that's a bit of a thing. Um, that's something I can't do right now. But I was also there for the, um, uh, for the burial as well. So I was there and I got to go back home in that time to spend time with my family during that hard time. And then a week later, I'm back here getting my transplant done. Like the fact that God could just cut that out so perfectly, perfect amount of time for me to, to do that is just insane to me, right? Um, and God continues to bless me in, in, in these ways, right? Um, uh, he's just continuing to bless me and continuing to bless me and continuing to bless me. So I got to go there and encourage my grandpa. I got to take communion with my grandpa before he passed away. And that's just, it's mind boggling to me because God put, literally put cancer on hold so that I could be there. You know, I just said to the devil, no, no, no now you stop. Because Austin's got to be at home with his family and then he can continue on with the transplant afterwards. The fact that God has that much authority over time and timelines and everything. And it's been like that since the beginning of time, right? It's just so incredible to me. It's so amazing how well God orchestrates all of that. It's just incredible to me. Um, so, you know, it, what shocks me still is that people still don't uh, give God the credit, really, that he deserves, right? Like in Isaiah 55, I think it's in Isaiah 55, verse 8 to 9, it says that his thoughts are not our thoughts, nor are his ways our ways. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, that is how much higher his thoughts are than our thoughts, and his ways are than our ways. Right, so, so God has a much higher understanding of things 
than you and I do, right? Which is exactly what uh, I'm talking about with this whole situation, right? Like, I'm not saying that that um, God caused him to die at a certain time, but to stretch my cancer through that time frame and to stop it there, just to show his authority over time, that, yeah, that's, that's just insane to me. That's incredible to me, right? And the fact that he orchestrated all of that is just, wow, is that amazing, right? But, you know, there's, there's so many people that, um, that it just, it shocks me that there are so many people in the world that think, I don't like how God did that. It's like, okay, well, yeah, well, then I need to kind of echo God in the book of Job, right? Where were you when he stretched the measuring line for the earth? Where were you when he was dangling the pump, pump up? God probably could have used you and all your knowledge and all your wisdom, right? I mean, really, seriously, just think about that. I mean, God right now is the only reason that I am still breathing. He's the only reason that you're still breathing too, right? So just take a breath. That's a reminder of God's grace and his love for you, right? Feel your pulse. You still have it. That's not by accident. God is giving you that as a gift, right? But, you know, um, being in a situation like this right now, I truly do believe that I'm in a season of testing similar to Job. Right, where the devil is approaching God and saying, test him further, I bet I can break him. And God is going, you don't get it, he's just gonna keep coming back to worship me because you don't know this one, right? That's kind of the way it was with Job, um, if you read it from the beginning, right? So, Some people just have really rough times with things, and um, I believe my time with the cancer was stretched through a very hard time in my life. So, um, so one thing that a lot of people don't know is that in my time having cancer, four people that I know and I'm close, was close with, passed away of cancer in that time. And that's just the devil trying to get to your head, right? Like that's, that's really annoying, right? Like he keeps, he does that kind of thing. Imagine what that does to your mind, right? And the devil is an expert at that. He tries to corrupt the mind as much as he can, right? Um, like say for example, even a thought that hit me today was like, how many people have died in this bed before me, right? And what makes me so special, right? That's clearly something that the devil put in my mind. But how many people have been delivered from cancer in this bed too, right? Like that's, that's another thing that Man, it's, it's, it just, it boggles the mind sometimes, right? Um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of this that if you are a Christian, there are no, um, it's not all going to be sunshine and rainbows. There are going to be times where life gets hard. And it's a testing of your faith, and you have to know how to get through that, right? And I read a Bible verse recently. It's in the um, book of John. It's John 21, verse... Uh, uh, let's see, John 21, verse... Eighteen. Not uh, actually it goes back further than that. So it goes back to verse eighteen. 
goes back to 15. Um, when they finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, I love you. And Jesus said, Then tend my sheep. And he said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And because Peter was grieved, he said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Then feed my sheep. This is the part that caught me right here. I actually read um, this part first and then the part that I just read, I read after. Okay, he says, truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted to walk. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. And that's kind of like my position right now, right? Now, Jesus said this to tell Peter the way that he was going to die, right? He's because Peter was crucified. In fact, he was crucified upside down. <coughs> um, but just thinking about that. When you remember, like, remember when you were a kid, you used to dress yourself and go and play wherever you wanted to play and go wherever you wanted to go, right? Well, when you're older, what's going to happen is someone else is going to dress you in something you don't want to be dressed in. And you're going to be led somewhere where you don't want to go. Right? I mean, right now, I don't want to be here, obviously not, right? I mean, I, that that would be so dumb of me to be, uh, you know, to want to be here, right? This, I didn't dress myself in this, right? I don't want to go and do a bone marrow transplant, but I have to, right? But I want you to keep your eye on the goal here because Jesus said this part first, Simon Peter, do you love me, right? Do you love me? Because this is what you're gonna go through if you do, right? You're gonna go through a really rough last bit of your life here, right? It's gonna be rough, it's gonna, it's gonna suck. But just know that, you know, you can trust me, I'll bring you through this, right? I'll, I'll get you to heaven and whatever else, right? Um, now, I have the benefit of knowing that I'm not going to pass away because of this, right? Um, so, but the guarantee remains the same. It's still, Austin, do you love me? Do you, do you trust me? Right? I know you're going through a really hard time right now, but do you trust me? Okay, so... Right now, what's gonna happen with you is I'm gonna offer you freedom. But before I do, what's gonna happen is you're gonna be dressed in something that you don't wanna be dressed in. And you're gonna be led somewhere you don't wanna go. And you're gonna have to go and do that, but stay focused here, right? Because, man, just keep in mind, if you love me, you will follow me through this, right? And that to me was just a beautiful, beautiful verse right now for me to hear, right? Because it's, it's all about trials. It's all about hardships. And life will have those, right? 
everybody's life has those. But just to think about it, like, yeah. Yeah, I know you're going through a hard time right now, but God is close to the brokenhearted. So all it needs to be is just you and God, you and Jesus, that's it, right? And he'll get you through these hard times, right? And you'll be, you'll be, you'll be better on the other side of it for it. <clears throat> right, so right now, it's just me and God, me and God, me and God. Hey, do you love me? Okay, do you trust me? All right, then go feed my sheep. And I'm just letting you know, you're gonna go through a hard time where your arms are gonna be stretched. You're, you know, you're gonna go through these hard times. You're gonna be dressed in something you don't wanna be dressed in. And you're gonna be led somewhere you don't wanna go. But on the other side of that lies freedom. And for me, it lies in this world, right? I gotta be free of all of this, all of this. No more cancer. No more Evans, no more uh, pen, uh, not pen, um, ADA2. It's all going to be gone, right? But to just sit humbly and realize that, you know, Jesus is in charge of it all. And um, sometimes following him means following him through the ballot the valley of the shadow of death and are you mature enough to do that when you know that it's just you and Jesus and that's it right so I uh, figured I wanted to say that today just to uh, uplift some of you guys because maybe you're going through a hard time right now might not be cancer but you might be going through a really hard time right now yourself I just want to encourage you guys with this. In this time, because life will have its ups and downs, is it just you and Jesus? Right? Is it just you and God? And you going, okay, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to follow you through this. I'm going to trust that you have this wisdom that, um, that it says in Scripture, right? That your ways are infinitely higher than mine. And your thoughts are infinitely higher than mine. And you have a judgment that I don't have. So I'm going to follow you through this. And I know right now it's going to be brutal. But I'm following you. Right? I'm going to do it because, you know, I love, I love you. Right? So I uh, just wanted to encourage you guys with that thought. So uh, take care. God bless. And I'll see you guys next time.